Hello everybody, so yesterday was the opening day of the Overwatch League 2019 and uh, a number of things were pretty interesting to me while I was watching. One of them being the fact that a lot of the Owl teams were a lot more sloppy with how they played GOATS than I was expecting. And I think this was mirrored around quite a number of analysts within the scene who were really expecting these guys to be like tight. For me, when I watch contenders, they're obviously really skilled, but I was expecting a similar level of uh, coordination from the top level of the contenders teams, but with better players and perhaps some like new strategies sprinkled in, a mi spr sprinkled in, maybe like more more rotations. But uh, the level of play was not particularly as high as I thought it would be. And the reason I thought they'd be really quick to adapt is like Team South Korea at the World Cup was super fast to adapt and actually ended up playing some really quite solid um, uh, fundamentals with their goats. Um, but when I was watching Philadelphia and the London Spitfire, it struck me the massive difference between these two teams in how they're just playing the fundamental stuff. Um, so I'll probably do a video later on about the Philadelphia Fusion and what I really liked about how they were playing the new meta because they played a bunch of different stuff and they had to counter the quad DPS uh, at times. So I think that that's a little illuminating and some good stuff to go off. They've certainly looked like the best team so far, even though we've only seen a, a small range of the teams, only seen eight of them. But Philadelphia Fusion were by far the best on the starting day. The London Spitfire, though, I really want to highlight like the some of the bubble and grav usage from Bird Ring, because I think there was a lot of talk about gesture, myself included. Um, I don't think he looked particularly comfortable, but I think his Reinhardt was actually better than his Winston was. But the Zarya is so key in the, these situations. So I've got a little moment here. I'm just going to turn that down the volume slightly because Mitch and uh, X are far too good, and you'll end up listening to them instead of me, I'm sure. So. What I want to bring your attention to is um, uh, the bubble usage and the fact that it doesn't really get punished so much as it's just really bad. Okay, so they're playing uh, Philadelphia Fusion and playing Winston Goats, which is what they played on the defense here in general, and they have like a lot of pressure coming in from Sado, and Carpe generates a ton of energy because every time he goes in, he's bubbled, and they're just basically really trying to apply tons of pressure onto these guys as they come around these rotations. So, a butt ton of pressure. They're forced to use trans, and so they back off, right? Philadelphia Fusion back off. Um, so, they rotate up to the high ground again, and uh, London Spitfire are just kind of chilling on their high ground for a while. And so, London have got in successfully. They've now got a fairly decent position, down in terms of ultimates, but okay, they can make something work here. So, Gesture drops to the floor, and this is really what I want to highlight, is that Gesture's in no position to be taking a bubble right now. He doesn't look like he wants to go aggressive. There isn't particularly anyone that he could pin down. Both Sado and Poco still have their movement abilities available, so they'd just be able to escape. And it's not like he's like diving deep into the back line or something, or they're taking like a direct head-to-head. -head. There's really no reason for Birdring to use his bubble here, I think. And so Gesture goes forward, and immediately there's a bubble. I mean, this isn't a bubble to peel, it's a bubble to, like, relieve some pressure on Gesture as he goes and uses his hammer rather than having his shield up. But it's just so unnecessary. And so, as it comes off here, I want you to note the time. So, 2 minutes and 6 seconds is when Birdring's, uh, Birdring's bubble will start the cooldown of 8 seconds. So it's going to be 1 minute and 58 on the clock by the time he's actually able to use another projected barrier. So... The fight carries on a little bit, they're trying to isolate somebody, or just regain a little bit of position. Uh, I don't know, the The point is the Zarya bubbles. So Gesture ends up over here. They get sucked into a grav, Carpe gets the grav onto them, and they're going to execute a grav bomb combo. Uh, yeah, so Carpe and Poco, they're going to throw the bomb up, and then they're going to uh, try and have it land on top of the grav. Now, the the metagame in terms of how this plays out is that Gesture's just going to shield, um, unless you manage to get a Ryan pin on him, which they can't do because they're running Winston, or you get a Brigitte shield bash. Okay, so obviously the Brigitte is a key target, so Carpe is normally going to give EQO some kind of bubble to be able to walk forward so that he doesn't die, and he's going to walk past the shield, because that was a recent change, and bash gesture. Okay, so EQO needs some kind of protection to be able to get in, even though they're in a graph, they could just kill him. So EQO needs a little bit of protection, maybe a bit of peel, to come forward, walk past the shield, bash gesture, as the diva bomb from Poco lands on top of them, boom, they're all dead. The other way of mitigating it is with Birdring's bubbles, but he's already used his bubbles, so look what happens in this situation. So gesture is holding up his shield, 
but they see EQO coming forwards, and they know that EQO is going to get this bash on Gesture, because Birdring can't bubble Gesture. If Birdring had his bubble and could just bubble Gesture, he's just going to be able to hold his shield up forever. There's no pin. Pin goes through bubble, right? So uh, that would have Gesture flying away. But the, um, the, the, the Brigitte shield bash could just be totally blocked if Birdring had kept hold of this bubble. And instead, he doesn't have it available for another two seconds, so he's forced to use his own... Look, he still doesn't have it. Still doesn't have it on cooldown. He's forced to use his own Graviton to lock them in. So they burn the sound barrier as well to keep them alive uh, anyway from the damage that's happening, and it will roughly protect you from a diva Bomb, but it's probably going to lose you the fight. But Birdring, because he can't bubble gesture, thinks it's necessary to grab EQO and catches some of the people in it, but prevents that shield bash. And then, just now, 158, he gets his projected barrier back, and it and it's there, and so he just uses it on gesture. <laughs> but there's no pressure on gesture. He's like, he's in that situation, you know, where you're like, the right move here is to use my projected barrier, but I just fucking used it eight seconds ago, uh, six seconds ago. So I don't have it on cooldown for another two seconds. So you can see here, like, the setup from Philly was really good. They go forwards. They, we're going to get the bash on gesture. They know that they don't have the bubbles available. Um, both teams trade the sound barriers in the end. Uh, EQO does die. Um, but I think in the end, this fight ends up going the way of Philadelphia Fusion because London Spitfire, uh, you know, burnt the sound barrier early on, got stuck in a poor situation, burnt a load of resources. I mean, gesture's kind of out of position. Um, so it's massively advantageous for London. So I think this is a, a good example to me of using um, of using your grab in that situation because you failed to use a bubble and things got very messy like you have to be really precise in terms of how you're actually using all of these abilities and London Spitfire seemed fairly all over the place actually in terms of how they were doing that there were a couple of other situations as well actually um, Birdring when he was uh, when he was defending um, threw away his Graviton in a fight, but I'm going to show you a different one of uh, 56 minutes on this VOD that I downloaded, which is on Volskaya. Um, so in this one, it's an overtime situation for Philadelphia Fusion, and then they're in the second round, so they've only got 20 seconds left. Again, they're playing the Winston Goats, but both teams are playing Winston Goats this time, and Carpe's got a Grav. So Fury is just an absolute animal and manages to eat this Graviton, but then I want to watch like what Birdring is up to. Less about bubbles, more about grav usage. So there Fury is able to get it. And the, the reason I want to highlight this is I saw it happen two or three times throughout the match. This isn't just an isolated incident. In in isolation, these aren't horrific, but I think it says something more about the um the ethos, the philosophy of London Spitfire when it comes to goats. Okay, so they've eaten the they've eaten the um what the fuck is it called? Eating the Graviton, so that's put them in a great position. Uh, pr both Primal Rage is being used, um, and they've used a the Sound Barrier as well. So London are actually in a pretty good position to hold. I mean, Birdring could reasonably get a Grav in this time. Uh, the Rally is going off, so that's providing so much uh, healing for their entire team. Boombox manages to get a Transcendence, so now they're not in the best position possible. They lose Bedoshin, now the fight's starting to turn the opposite way. Not the best. Birdring is almost up to his Grav. The most important thing that should be going through London Spitfire's head right now, in my opinion, is this fight is lost. This fight is going to be lost. We need to hold on to point B. Like, Goats has got so much snowball potential. Neptuno's going to come in with a sound barrier, and London have bur burnt both of theirs. Uh, Carpe could reasonably generate a Graviton in the time it takes you to push, um, you know, in, in the actual fight that ensues on point B, because he's just been so high-charged the entire time. Um, so you should be trying to save ultimates as much as possible. This is a great grav uh, bomb combo to completely wipe them out on B and just ensure that you finish. Okay, we we failed to hold them on point A, but at the very least they didn't get a single tick on point B, which is a pretty winnable situation. And instead, as they did on Hollywood, um, and as New York actually did on Horizon once as well against Boston, they've got a very, like, the every fight is winnable situation in their head, but it's it's just not. So Birdring just gets his ultimate up. Both Bedoshin and Nurse have gone down, and Birdring uses his grab here and instantly dies. And Fury tries to combo it with a with his own ultimate. 
So they're going for a grav bomb combo when Carpe's still got his bubbles up, so he's able to keep them alive. Look, Carpe just uses a projected barrier and hides behind it. He doesn't even need his own personal barrier. Like, that's the value of Zarya bubbles in a Graviton, right? That's like Philadelphia Fusion playing it well, but London Spitfire just way over committing to that. Uh, and so they lose everybody every anyway, which of course you're going to do. And now they've just burned literally every ultimate that they had available. Perfectly fine to exchange those support ultimates, but not fine at all um, to do the rest. I think that was actually a pretty... What was Neptuno doing soundbarring at the end? That was like a, a victory soundbarrier, I suppose. No, it was just a stop them getting killed by the Diva Bomb, but it, it wasn't necessary. Anyway, the errors are far larger for the London Spitfire, in my opinion, because these resources should just never have been burnt. And the end result of this map is that with 30 seconds left, Philadelphia Fusion are able to roll in here and actually take it. I mean, we can watch them do it if you like while I ramble. But Philadelphia Fusion come in here, and they've just got so much more momentum because of those late spawners on Birdring and Fury. The fact that there's no pressure coming in the door, they get early position pretty early, and then they're able to generate ultimates. I mean, look at Carpe's. Look at Carpe's ult here. You've given such an ult lead to Carpe, and you don't have your own ult, and these players are just getting trashed. Like, it's brutal to watch. This completely should have been a lockout for the London Spitfire on point B, and instead, Philadelphia Fusion are able to complete the whole thing, like the entirety of point B, and it puts London in a fairly unwinnable situation. Whereas if they'd been able to hold on point B, they probably would have won that map. And I, I saw it a number of times. I think the Zarya players in Owl have quite a carry mentality because they're so fucking good. Like, I would expect guys like Carpe, Birdring, uh, Nene, uh, who else? I mean, people we haven't seen yet as well, like Sinatra, for example. Um, I would expect these to be some of the absolute best Zarya's in the world at being able to keep consistent charge and output like massive amounts of damage. But GOATS is so much more about bubbles and how you abuse bubbles. And the more that people review these VODs and realize that people are just throwing bubbles away, the more punishing it's going to get when they go wrong. I mean, the stuff for London in this game wasn't even particularly Philadelphia punishing them for it. It was their own mistakes coming back to bite them. I don't think Philly were identifying these as opportunities particularly. I mean, they were, but it wasn't anything special from Philly to be able to take advantage. It was more London just shooting themselves in the foot. And also, the, a, a good point to be made, even though I've put Zarya mistakes from Birdring in the title, this is really London mistakes and mistakes from a lot of Zarya's in the league. For example, on that, um, when, when Birdring wasted his grab on Hollywood, that was just him. But when Birdring wasted his grav on Volskaya just then, that was a clearly a coordinated call from somebody because Fury followed up with the Diva Bomb. So, I mean, whether it was Birdring calling that to happen, Fury calling it to happen, either Jester or Badoshin still thinking it was winnable, those are the two guys that are normally doing the shot calling for this team. Like, there is some misunderstanding, I think, of how clean you need to be when you play GOATS, and the Owl team seem to be playing it a bit more in, like, a carry style, where the Zarya's try and go out there and you just build a team around them and they're gonna frag people, but I think uh, there's a step up that needs to be taken, and some teams like the Philadelphia Fusion, maybe we'll see the Shock do it, um, it will, or, or maybe the Titans as well, will have that cleaner kind of play, and we'll end up winning for it, I think.